I called on the Cabinet Secretary, I'm not sure the Cabinet Secretary's terminal is working, but I called on the Cabinet Secretary, if her terminal will work, to Thank you. speak in the debate. Thank you. Presiding officer, in opening the second day of this important debate on Scotland's choice and Scotland's future, I want to reflect on a number of points. It is right that this Parliament takes time to debate this most important fundamental issue of sovereignty of our people. Yesterday, we heard a large number of members express their sincerely and deeply held views. And like all debates about deeply held views, there was emotion and passion from all sides. Democratic debate has to reflect the diversity of views. But as speeches yesterday from Bruce Crawford and Ruth McGuire in particular warned, this chamber has a responsibility in conduct and tone to collectively lead that debate with respect and responsible leadership. More important than ever in this most challenging of circumstances for Scotland, for the UK and for Europe. Because the UK withdrawing from the EU presents Scotland with one of the most critical challenges it has faced in the modern era as we face being taken out of the EU against our will. And if Scotland can be ignored on an issue as important as this, then it is clear our voice and our interest can be ignored at any time on any issue. We produced a substantial plan for both Scotland and the UK to remain in the single market and we actively engaged with the UK Government when it said it wanted to reach an agreed UK approach to Article 50 negotiations. So where are we now? The UK Government voted against guaranteeing the residency rights of EU nationals. There has been no serious engagement as equal partners from the UK Government over our proposal for Scotland's place in Europe. Indeed, without notice, and only two days before the Joint Ministerial Committee was to have its first formal consideration of our compromise proposals, the Prime Minister announced the UK will be outside the single market and likely the customs union. And now the United Kingdom government speaks recklessly of departing the EU with no deal at all. This is more than a hard Brexit. This is a Brexit which increasingly evidence warns could cause lasting damage to Scotland's economy and jobs, as well as vital investment and trade. The Fraser of Allender Institute cautions that under a WTO scenario, GDP in Scotland would be over £8 billion lower than otherwise the case. Uh, employment, 80,000 lower. Real wages, £2,000 lower. And exports, over 11% lower. And the people of Scotland were told in 2014 that the only way to remain in the EU was to vote against independence. Mm. They were then told to, to vote remain to achieve the same outcome. Scotland has now done both these things, and yet we are still being taken out of the EU. And on top of this, the manner and the approach of the United Kingdom government, with only one Conservative MP in Scotland, to withdrawing from the EU has created uncertainty and anxiety. This should matter as much to those who voted leave as to those who voted remain. And the terms of the departure emerging from Westminster go against our nation's fundamental values of fairness, welcome and openness to the world, including towards our European friends and neighbours, as well as the economic self-interest that freedom of movement affords Scottish business and Scottish jobs reliant on EU nationals. This government was mandated by the Scottish Parliament immediately after the EU referendum to do all we can do to protect Scotland's interest. And this we have done, and this we will continue to do. John Scott. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary, for taking the intervention. Can you tell us today what the Scottish Government's position is on Europe? Is it full or partial membership today, or are we waiting to hear on Alec Neil's advice before coming to a decision today? Cabinet Secretary. The Scottish National Party's position and the Scottish Government position is, as it has been for some time, EU membership, and that is what we are pursuing. Now, we were elected less, we were elected less than a year ago on a manifesto which explicitly set out, and I quote, the Scottish Parliament should have the right to hold another referendum if there is a significant and material change in the circumstances that prevailed in 2014, such as the Scotland being taken out of the EU against our will. Now, this government understands that people have been asked to make a number of momentous decisions in a short period of time. But these circumstances are not of our choosing. Change will happen because of Brexit. And we need to decide how we respond and how the people of Scotland can exercise their sovereign power to determine their future in these changing circumstances. 
And should the Parliament decide to hold a Scottish referendum, our proposed time frame is logical and sensible. At some point between the autumn of 2018 and the spring of 2019, we are not suggesting holding a Scottish referendum now, but when the terms of the Brexit deal are ready. Now, to fit in with the Prime Minister's own time frame, the Article 50 negotiations will be concluded by October 2018. And the European Commission has made that clear. So the terms of the deal will be known before any independence referendum. And we will set out, I'm, I'm closing my remarks, and we will set out the opportunities and the challenges of independence well in advance of a referendum. As a consequence of the Brexit vote, much is at stake now for Scotland, which not only impacts on our relationship with the EU, but who we are as a nation. It is impossible to deny that this is a fundamental, never mind significant and material change in circumstances since 2014. The next two years are hugely important for Scotland. They'll determine the kind of country we are to become. In those changed circumstances and in that different context, surely it must be for the people of Scotland to decide their future. It is their choice. Let the people decide their future. Support the motion.